Greetings folks, centre of gravity. What does it mean? How do you find it? I've been asked this a few times by people, um, so this is going to be a quick and simple explanation of centre of gravity. Basically, centre of gravity is the point on which your plane balances. If you put your two fingers under the wings, with the battery in place, ready to fly, that's the centre of gravity where it balances. Simple as that. Not quite as simple as that. You have to get that point in the right spot in relation to the wing. Generally, it has to be about 30% back from the leading edge of the wing. A quick and easy way that I work out centre of gravity on a plane that I've, um, I've modded or built or something like this, this is the Dynam Scout. I've, I've modded it extensively, put a bigger motor on, taken the landing gear off, so I had to work out the centre of gravity all over again. So I've got the battery in there. Rough estimate, 30% back. I put my fingers underneath the wing there and balance it. And I know that's going to be roughly the right spot for the centre of gravity to be. That means that the plane will fly stably. It won't be too squirrely, won't be nose up and wobbling around all over the place. Won't be too nose down. A little bit of nose down is okay. But that basically is the position you need to balance the plane to get it to fly stably. So, the Dynam Scout. What about something like the Bixler? Well, with the Bixler, you get a manual. It tells you in the manual where the centre of gravity has to be. 334 plus or minus 10 millimetres from the nose of the plane. So you measure back from the nose, 334 millimetres. And that ends up right on the back edge of that spar there. So you have to put a big enough battery in the nose there to get the plane to balance when you put your fingers on the back of that spar. Simple as that. If you put a lighter battery in and it's actually balancing like that, the plane is said to be tail heavy and it'll be extremely hard to fly. You'll probably crash it. Very unstable. Now I'll show you a couple of examples of a tail heavy planes. First up is the wonderful Synapse flying wing from Experimental Airlines. So I was flying this wing nicely early on and then I decided to add a camera onto the wing uh, and of course that moved the centre of gravity too far back. So now it's tail heavy and you can see as soon as it takes off it's going nose up and it's overreacting, wobbling around uh, and I basically can't control it and I'm lucky to get it back down to the ground without crashing it. And next up we have uh, the orange slim wing plane. This is the first time I've flown it, the absolute maiden. I took off, immediately goes nose up, overreacting to aileron inputs obviously tail heavy. Once again lucky to get it down without doing damage to it. What about something like a wing? Well you can go onto RC Groups, uh, forum for the wing of your choice, like the Tech Sumo here, type in centre of gravity and see if you can find out if someone else has worked it out for you. I guarantee they have. But there's also a calculator available online, I'll put a link to it in the notes. Uh, for flying wings you just plug in the, the measurements of the wing and it will tell you exactly where the centre of gravity should be. What about a total scratch build like uh, my Boxler here? Well, the way I found out the centre of gravity here is I loaded it all up with battery, motor, servos, everything that needs to fly apart from the wing, grab the plane, find out where it balances and there it is there. And I put a mark here so now I know exactly where the centre of gravity of the fuselage is. Then all I had to do was mount the wing so that the 30% back mark on the wing matches up with that centre of gravity mark. Then I know that this plane will fly reasonably stable. I may need to make adjustments backwards and forwards with the battery to make little adjustments to the centre of gravity, but uh, I can fly it and find out exactly what I need to do there. Now, if you find that you're flying around with your elevator pulled back all the time, then there's a good chance that your nose heavy and you can move your battery back a little bit to move the centre of gravity back a little bit. If you find you're having to push the elevator forward all the time and the plane is overreacting, going nose up, there's a good chance that you're tail heavy and you need to add a bit more weight to the nose or move the battery forward. And you just keep making those little, little adjustments until you can fly around with the um, elevator basically in the centre. What about a wing like the Fury Race Wing? 
this actually has centre of gravity marks moulded into the foam. So put your fingers on those centre of gravity marks, load it up with battery, camera, all the stuff you're going to use. If it balances, there's a good chance this plant wing is going to fly in a stable manner. If it's tail heavy like that, if it keeps tipping back like that, it's going to be hard to control. On a plane like the Lafish aerobatic slope sawer, uh, the centre of gravity can be a lot further back because you want this plane to be quite loose and manoeuvrable. So you can actually line it up possibly 40% back from the leading edge. And slope sawers uh, have a bit of an advantage because they're flying in lift that is coming up the slope. And that means that uh, they don't have to be quite so stable in their design. Uh, they'll fly nicely with the centre of gravity back a little bit further. So that's a quick and dirty explanation of centre of gravity. That's the centre of gravity mark. My centre of gravity is right about there on my belly, belly button. The evil hood's centre of gravity is uh, right about there on his belly button. So if I, to put, I were to put wings on the evil hood, it would have to be sort of 30% back mark would be lining up with his belly button. I should try that sometime. They will strike when least expected. Thanks for watching.